my Big Mac. I don't want any of that sauce on the mat. No, no mayonnaise or sauce or whatever. Did I say no mayonnaise and no sauce? Yes. See what that is? That's sauce. Hey, look at this. I don't think you're getting it. <laughs> no, I think they see it. All the way to the park, to the grocery store. Specifically, he ordered no mustard, no sauce. No, actually, I ordered a Big Mac earlier with no sauce. <laughs> I ordered, I ordered the Big Mac with no mayonnaise. Sir, sir, earlier I came to the <laughs> I ordered a Big Mac, I said no mayonnaise, no sauce or anything. Yeah. I've got the video where I ordered like no mayo. I've got the video. I said no sauce, no mayo, nothing. So we're going to church. This is my old church I used to go to. We're going to try different churches. Well, that's great. I love this church, Stephen. Thankful today for his blood that made a way for us to have eternal life with him. Because our behavior, our actions made us worthy of death and hell forever. But Jesus made a way that through faith we could be with him in heaven forever more this life then is not the end if you're in this place today and you haven't made that decision i want to tell you as lovingly but as bluntly as i possibly can there is more to this life than what happens on this earth and the decisions you make on this earth will have consequences forever forever every one of us is going to stand before the lord and there's going to be like a, a fork in the road behind the lord those who put their faith in Jesus will go to be with him forever, and those who didn't will go to be separated from him forever. Can I encourage you, with every single cell in my body today, call out to Jesus today to save you, and don't live with that regret forevermore that you didn't take the opportunity today, this morning, at this church, to do that. Why don't you stand with me today? What Jesus did on that, that last supper, as it's called. On the night, the same day that he was to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Man or woman, young or old, for you in this place today. So let's together partake and remember the broken body of Jesus as we partake the celebration together. The rain of darkness now is ended in the kingdom of God. Thank you. 
compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. And in the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. Understand the context of the parable. There was no way in that parable for that person to be able to pay that back. It was impossible. This debtor owed a million, owed millions of dollars, not just one, but millions. He couldn't pay, and so his master ordered him that he be sold, along with his wife, children, and everything he owned to pay the debt. He wouldn't pay the debt, but that was, in those days, that's how it happened, if you will. But the man who owed him this fell down before his master and begged him, please be patient with me, and I will pay it all. And then his master was filled with pity for him, and he released him and forgave his debt. When the man left the king, he went up to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars, and he grabbed him by the throat. I don't know what version that is, but I like it. <laughs> grabbed him by the throat and uh, demanded instant payment of a few thousand dollars. So keep the comparison in mind. A few thousand versus millions and millions. He grabbed him by the throat, demanded instant payment, and his fellow servant fell down before him and begged him for a more time. Then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Should you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. That's when my heavenly father, what, what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and your sisters from your heart. Matthew 18, 21, 35. Synopsis of the parable is very, very basic. The first point is that you and I have received a great pardon and a huge forgiveness from our, our Father in heaven. Do you know that to be true? How many know it's great? Probably your forgiveness was greater than your name's, right? We have no idea. But the truth is that we still needed the blood of Christ, regardless if we thought we were a greater sinner or a lesser sinner. And maybe we actually were. So we received a great pardon, and we didn't deserve it. We did not deserve it, just like in the parable. We didn't deserve it. Along with this forgiveness came Jesus' expectation that because he forgave us, that we'll forgive others. We just will. That's what he expects of us. Notice that the size of this that we needed didn't change his willingness to give it to us. And the size of the forgiveness that others need from us doesn't change our responsibility to forgive them. We still need to forgive them, according to the scriptures. Now, most Christians are aware of the Lord's expectation that we would forgive others, just as we have been forgiven. In the Lord's Prayer, it's embedded right in the Lord's Prayer. What does it say? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's right in the scriptures. We know that very well. However, many of us don't realize the pain that our unforgiveness inflicts on us. We don't realize it. And usually that's because it's all wrapped up in this sense of rights. I have a right to hold this against you because justice is not enough. We don't realize the pain that that inflicts on us. My decision not to forgive someone else puts me in prison, say prison. It puts me in prison, it puts me in jail. It's a jail or a prison of my own doing. It's a jail or a prison of my own doing. Even though I think that the one who hurt me should be the one that's suffering, it's me who suffers when I don't offer forgiveness to that person. Let's look at how unforgiveness affects us. Number one, according to the scriptures, it brings out the worst in me. Scripture says, Jesus speaking in Luke chapter 17, verse 3, it says this. So watch yourselves. If another believer sins, rebuke that person. Then if there is repentance, forgive. Even if that person wrongs you seven times, and each time turns again and has forgiveness, you must forgive. So when someone offends you, or offends me, or causes us pain, our focus is almost exclusively on them, and very often not on us. Because we're the one that hurts, we're the one that's offended, we're the one that's the issue. We should get, the, we should be the one that's looked to and and uh, be relieved of this pain. But we spend most of our time looking at others and not on ourselves. As a result, if we're not careful, and this is what Jesus.
Jesus meant when he said to watch yourself. If we're not careful, anger and bitterness can come into our lives, which are normal symptoms. Hear me now. Anger and bitterness are, are normal symptoms of unforgiveness. It's a breeding ground for unforgiveness in our lives. Matthew 12, 15 says this. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many, not just you, but many. So you can become a source with that bitterness of not just destroying yourself, but also destroying everyone around you. Just as Jesus said to watch out, unforgiveness can sneak up on you. It can defile you. It can defile me. It can defile many people around us. Without us even being aware, being aware of the top. One of the effects of unforgiveness is anger or wrath. I, mean, I have a friend, I said this in the first service, I have a friend, her name is Nancy Powers. I'm going to her right here. Nancy lives in Eston. Great, great woman of God. But she started looking forward to next Christmas on Boxing Day. Now I want you to know that that is a sickness. <laughs> That's what that is. That is a sickness if ever there was one. A I T H. And a wraith is a ghost or a spirit that can't rest. It spends every day reliving its past. It's experienced something in its past that it's unable to move away from. And so it wakes up in the morning and it wakes up. I don't know. I'm not an expert on ghosts. But it lives every day with the idea that it's focusing on the past. Focusing back, going back to something. Something happened here, or maybe numbers of things happened here. And it just made it really tough for them to move on. As a result, here's the deal. Its future is totally controlled by its past. Its future is totally controlled by its past. In his trilogy, The Lord of the Rings, Tolkien writes about the nine ring race as ghosts who are stuck in the past. In a similar way, if I don't clearly deal with past offenses and not hold unforgiveness, if I don't do that, I will bring bitterness and anger and an inability to move on past the situation. Let me tell you something. We all have these situations, right? We all do. You've had somebody who uh, betrayed you. Somebody who promised something that didn't come true. Somebody who promised something and they didn't deliver. Someone who said, I'll be faithful to you and they weren't faithful to you. Or someone that you maybe didn't even have necessarily that deep a relationship with and they hurt you for whatever reason. Maybe it was just for fun. We all have these. There isn't one person that's here today who doesn't have those experiences because we live in a fallen creation. And we're fallen creatures in a fallen creation. So it happens. Some of you are thinking of those right now. It's true. But we need to get past that. Regardless of how bad this was, it will be doubly bad because it will destroy our future. And we'll not be able to live that which God has given us and enjoy it as he wants us to enjoy it. If I don't clearly deal with past offenses, it brings anger and bitterness and an inability to move on. I am restless all the time. Just restless. I can't focus. Or controlled and in some cases haunted, not from a ghost, but from my past. Guys, we need to move on. Amen? We need to get past this. I'm not saying it's easy. Please don't hear what I'm not saying. Nothing, let me say this just so you know, if you don't get anything else today. Forgiveness is not simple. It's not. The concept is, but the execution requires a decision on your part. And for you to experience the rest of that particular time focused on doing the right thing, instead of letting it just happen to you. Unforgiveness isn't static, it affects what grows us self-pity and cynicism and contempt for others it can make us twisted and distorted. We can put on a good face. Listen, I'm good at this. I can put on a good face, but I'm only one scratch on my soul away from revealing the true me. The irony of this is many times people will hold the torch for a past events committed against them. 
thinking that in doing so, they are keeping the one who's hurt them on the hook. And yet the truth is that it's them that are being kept on the hook. When I choose not to forgive, I willingly hear me, I willingly, willingly, by my choice, walk into a prison cell, close the door behind me, and lock myself in. I become a prisoner of my own doing. The only way out is to forgive. You ever get in that situation where somebody's done something to you? And you can't let it go? Maybe it's mom or dad, brother, sister. Maybe it was a school teacher or a boss. Maybe it was a pastor. Maybe it's somebody who knew better and took advantage of you. Number three, many of us believe that personal, our personal justice and clarity needs to be dealt with up front first before I can be free to forgive. But we'll never be free from unforgiveness if we don't leave the issue of justice with God. Leave justice with God. The Bible says, revenge is mine, saith the Lord. Amen? His revenge, not yours. It's not you to unscramble these eggs and make things right. If you require your story to be vetted and told in a court of law, then you'll find yourself somewhere between the prosecutor and the defense in a kangaroo court that will never relieve your soul of the effects of unforgiveness. It just won't. It can't. It doesn't have that ability. If you went into a court of law and somebody found out that your story was absolutely right and they applied justice to the one that hurt you, you would walk out of there the same way that you walked in. You might shake your fist and say, yes! God, you ever do that when somebody who hurt you gets theirs? Huh? I want you to know I did that the night that Boston lost to the Panthers. <laughs> Yes! It was a great day. But I still, I still have this unforgiveness towards the Maple Leafs. Who bought to beat in the first place. Those aren't consequential things. Well, they are to some people. But if you find yourself rallying and rejoicing at the loss of somebody else because it meant that they got theirs, you haven't forgiven them. You haven't forgiven them. And think about the cross. Where was Jesus' story told? It wasn't told. He went to court as well. And he got handled very poorly. In fact, in many cases, he didn't answer the charges that were coming up against him. So there was no story being told. And as a result, there was no justice applied. How did he respond? Wait a minute. Don't put another nail in until you tell you my side of the story. He didn't do that. He didn't say stop with the whipping until such time as I can get a new defense attorney. He didn't do that. What did he do? He nailed to the cross. He said, forgive them, Lord. Say that with me. Forgive them, Lord. They know not what they do. No justice. There was no justice on the cross. Not justice that we would expect if we were handled in a similar manner. Hurts us when we don't forgive others, but when we take up a third party offense, we bring a whole new world of hurt into our lives. I'm not talking about making, you know, change in the world and all that kind of thing. I'm talking about something that's, that seeped down into your soul to the point that it has brought unforgiveness and a sense of overwhelming injustice into your life. You've taken it personally. This is one of the most destructive types of unforgiveness and one of the hardest ones to overcome. But because you're offended at something that isn't even your fight. Remember that forgiveness will only come to your life when you make a decision to take action. You just have to decide. Let me just stop here and say this to you. I want you to know that forgiveness is one of the hardest things you'll ever do. It just is. Some of you have really deep-seated family issues. Some of you have deep-seated church issues or issues from your past. Please don't think I'm minimizing those. I'm not. It's tough. And then as if I don't know what you've experienced, and I think this is simple, please don't believe that. It's not simple. It's hard. Some forgiveness happens like that. It's a choice. It's done. You move on. Some forgiveness takes time months in some cases. 
But both cases start with the decision to say, I decide today to forgive. Realize that forgiveness is not a denial nor an agreement with the offense that was committed against you. The fact that you let someone off the hook, per se, whatever that looks like, doesn't mean that you're agreeing with the offense that, that you experienced. Do you know those two people that most of us don't forgive the most? Do you know who they are? One is God. He doesn't put his sleep over that, by the way. But you still need to forgive him. Okay, he doesn't need to be forgiven. Maybe you can. Because you're letting yourself out of jail. And the other one is you. You need to forgive you. You need to ask the Lord to strengthen you so that you would not hold yourself to a higher call than the people. By forgiving your offender, you aren't saying that they are without guilt. And you aren't saying that you're going to eliminate the memory of this tragedy, this issue that brought about in the first place. You'll probably continue to remember it. But you'll remember it with a different set of eyes, if I could say it that way. You'll see it through a different lens. Instead of you seeing it in a rising bitter and anger, bitterness and anger out of your heart, you're actually looking through it through the eyes of forgiveness, the Father who's forgiven you. You see totally different. You see the same thing. Exactly the same thing. But it's different now. Because the Holy Spirit has done his work. Regardless of how long it takes, the Holy Spirit has done his work to bring you to a place of not just making the choice to forgive, but actually experiencing forgiveness. I'm going to tell you how to get out of jail. Is that all right? I'm going to tell you anyways. You know that. Here's how to get out of jail. The first thing you have to do <clears throat> is to confess to Jesus out loud your need to forgive this person or these people. You have to call them by name. You have to call them by name. So if for whatever reason uh, my wife, Sandra, was the one I needed to forgive, I would say, Jesus, starting today, and with your help, I choose to forgive Sandra. Let's say this together. Jesus, let's all say this together. Jesus, starting today, and with your help, I choose to forgive. Sorry, I should have told you that was coming. Some of you slipped up the last part there. <laughs> Don't be embarrassed by that. But you've got to say it out loud, friends. You have to, you have to confess it out loud. Because the enemy of your soul and your soul have to hear that. You've got to say it out loud. So confess out loud your need to forgive this person or these people. Use their name and make that decision. This is a decision. The whole aspect of a complete sense of forgiveness can be wrapped up in that one choice to make that one statement. It can be cathartic and transformative, just like that, right? But for many of us, we're going to have to walk that out. I don't like the walking out. If these people know you uh, and know that they have hurt you, you believe they have, ask the Holy Spirit to show you opportunities directed by Him where you can forgive them face to face. Wow, this just elevated beyond any sense of the real friends. Yeah? That's what he wants you to do. Don't make that happen. Don't rush out and get on the phone after service. Get all caffeinated up and say, Hey, I just want you to know that I forgive you what you did to me. <laughs> Wait for the Holy Spirit to direct that. And if you know he directed this, if it's sovereign, and it will be, then you can be assured of the fact that he's prepared their heart as much as he's prepared your willingness to talk to them. If they're not aware of the offense that they've caused, keep it to yourself until the Lord tells you otherwise. And then walk in the office of spirit. Jesus tells us this in Matthew 5 and 4. But I say if you love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you. Man, oh man. Some days you think that's your entire friends list, eh? 
or you can take a family member with every one of those, maybe. Jesus said, do that. Why? Because that's past the moment. It's not launching off into a tirade about your rights. It's a matter of moving in the opposite. Remember that God is the one who brings transfer transformation to you. This sometimes takes time. It always begins with your decision to forgive. And it may not be received. If the opportunity is there for the person who's offended and hurt you to know that you've forgiven them, they may not respond, uh, respond positively to that. That's not your deal, right? That's not your deal. It's not rinse and repeat when it comes to the need for forgiveness. Leave it. Do what God asks you to do and leave it. And when forgiveness comes into our lives, we need to understand that it presents us with a debt. You may not have ever considered this way, but it's a debt. The same way the parable debt was actually monetary, millions and thousands, if you will. The debt of unforgiveness is not monetary. Forgiveness is a decision on our part to deal with pain. pain. And instead of inflicting that pain on them, we take it upon ourselves. We say, I'll forgive in spite of the fact that it hasn't been what I thought it would be. Forgiveness is a decision on your part to pay the debt yourself. Same way the king did. Forgiveness is not disregarding somebody's sin. It's in spite of it paying the emotional currency for that sin here. It's you taking out your wallet, your purse, and paying that debt. You're paying it. But Pastor, they don't deserve that. That's very intuitive of you. And neither did we. Amen? Amen. And neither did we. Romans 5, 6 to 8 says, For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Grace comes in your reflection of the forgiveness that you've received. And there'll be strength for you, therefore, to turn around and give that same forgiveness to somebody else. But I tell you, this isn't easy. I'm preaching next week. I'll give you some, put some more humor in there. This is something the Lord requires of us. It's something He asks of us. And I'm not commanding, I have no right to do that move if I could. But I want you to know that, that part of our salvation is freedom. When Christ, when Christ has set free, we'll be free to be. Sometimes we hold on to and find ourselves in jail, in prison, of our own doing. It's us doing this. We can't understand why it is we can't be on, get beyond this particular nine by nine cell, if you will, of our life. Because we need to forget. For you, maybe it was a mom or dad. Maybe they did something. No, there's lots and there's hundreds of people over the course of your life who've done things to you. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about those who have done things to you which you haven't said, I forgive you. It's different. Maybe it's a sponsor or a friend. It could be an employer. Mother or father, that happens a lot with families. Or maybe another family member, maybe it's a sister, a brother, or a friend. Maybe it's your spouse. Maybe you found yourself in the midst of a really messy divorce. It's bad enough that you're not living together anymore, and the marriage is dissolved and you've been divorced. It's another thing for you to carry more than just your share of the suitcases out of the house. For those to be things that you have in your life. Let the, the 
eggs alone. You get rid of the anger and the bitterness. You say, I, I, have, I am distraught over this situation. But even if one party is 100% wrong and the other is zero, Look at this nice coffee place that I have in the church. This is like the, they got, like this is such a nice church, you guys. Like we're really like super nice. Well, parents guide to YouTube. Oh yeah. Like, you know, talk to your kids about YouTube. Crazy. Okay. But people who have made it on YouTube generally seem more authentic, whether or not they actually are, because they are more open and often willing to show more of their uh, more of their everyday lives. It's so nice, like TikTok. <laughs> they have a one for all of them. Suicide and self harm prevention too. Anyway, yeah. We got the summer drinks, you guys. Oh, I guess we I, do I need to go around or can, there's nobody behind me. Can I pull up the app real quick? I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull up the app real quick. There's nobody behind me, okay? Is that okay? There's nobody there's nobody behind me. I'm gonna pull up the app. Um sorry, are you gonna pull up to the next one? Well, there's no Oh she's behind. just she's just going on the app really quick. One sec, oh, okay. sorry. No <laughs> well, they make it complicated. She couldn't know. hear you. That's why. Yes, so I uh, um, uh, I lost the code. Uh, this is so funny. Um, what's the name for the word? Jill Thompson. Jill Thompson. My Big Mac. I don't want any of that sauce on the map. No, no mayonnaise or sauce or whatever. <laughs> uh, do you have any pancakes on the app? It's okay. I'll order mine separate. On the separate order, I'll order. Can, mine. Uh, I'll get some pancakes too. 
and a mango uh, mango drink and a, and a pomegranate drink. And one milk, please. I can have milk if I can. And, and a milk. Thank you. Thank you. So what size? A medium. Two mediums. Mango and uh, pomegranate. Yeah. And then would that be all? I'm um, just looking to see. I think there's a, spend $15 or more and get a free uh, snack size milkshake. Uh, sorry, milkshake? It says, it says free. If you order $15, you get a free milkshake on the app. Um, it doesn't work because you already applied a discount. Okay. It doesn't work today? Um, you already have a discount required. Okay, you only get one per day? Yeah. Okay. Alright, thanks. But thank you. <laughs> I already paid, right? No, I didn't pay. Uh, I already paid for the Big Mac though, didn't I? I paid for on my app. Yeah, I did. The two medium and yeah, but I but I already paid for the Big Mac on my app. And we'll see you at the next window. Okay. <laughs> Man, this is so funny. Ah, oh, I just hate how like I don't look like I have eyelashes. Hey. Wow, this looks good. This looks great. Amazing. Let's let's go read religious but you will read your Bible and I'll read this religious book. Okay. Just read around the corner and make it up. Thank you. Okay. Let's you go. Want me just to drive it around again and No no just read around the Okay. <laughs> Cause they have you want you wanna know why they do that? Do you know why they do that, Mom? Because they have pressured points on the floor that like they time it how long the cars in the drive through because it's supposed Are you to be sure? yes my friends worked out they have pressure points how long someone's in the drive through yeah and i was too long in the drive through yeah well like no but you were ordering that doesn't count they want from when you get your food like when you they don't want you waiting at that window cuz they'll time how long the car is waiting to get their food oh so i should just wait there no, why would you do like? That? What are you saying? Like, what? Are, what are they timing? What is the like? Because it's supposed to be fast food, right? Yeah. So they okay. time like who, like they everywhere they time. Why don't you go read your Bible and I'll read this Bible? Okay, part. well. So are we gonna talk about? Oh my God, this is so nice. Happily ever laughter, discovering the lighter side of marriage. <laughs> Dedicate to my children and grandchildren. It brought me much happiness and laughter in my life. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, let's check. I didn't get my milk. Wait. Oh, wait, 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 let me check first. Let me check properly. <laughs> wait, yeah, I didn't get the milk. I, don't think. I think I forgot to order the milk. You did. You sent some milk, right? Did you have a milk bag? Did they put it on the bill? <laughs> Wait, you want to get some milk? Not really. Milk first? Oh. I mean, I do, but would you rather just... You've got this, Jada, isn't there? Okay, for, yeah. For today? Yeah. I mean, I will go get shoppers, but then our stuff is going to get cold. Okay, no, it's fine. I probably... He probably didn't hear it or something. Yeah. I don't know if you look at the bill and see It's if fine. I don't it. need it. I got the drink. It's fine. Okay, we're going to go to the park? Yeah. The ledge. Let's go to the ledge or the candy Like, cane sorry. Work? The candy cane. I'm going to go to the candy cane work. You want to go in front of the water? The yeah, like not the ledge, but like where we went. Like Where that dancer always dances and dives in the water. <laughs> Dancing Bob, you know he's famous here? What, where he's is an he icon. Now? He's just around, like you'll always catch him at events. And stuff and like Dwight actually had him on the podcast where they interviewed him. They did? Yeah. Seriously? And it got like 2,000 views. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. On the after party podcast. And when podcast. he interviewed you how many views did he get? Maybe 500, 700, 600. 600. It's probably, I don't know well, what Maybe if he started dancing at the ledge he'd get more views. <laughs> 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 
But well, if you jump in, you'd probably get even more. Yeah. Um, no, but one time I got him jumping in on my YouTube channel. I saw that. Oh. She's going to do a review for you guys. Okay. Pomegranate. Mm -hmm. oh, very good. You <laughs> know, one to ten. They're both equally perfect. Really? Ten for both. I really? Like both. Okay, let me sure. Just... Oh, you're supposed to shake them a little bit because all the things is at the end. Wow. Those actually are so good, like better than the Tim's ones for real. But that tastes like a lot of sugar. But like Which I love one it. It tastes like a lot of sugar. Both. But I feel like it's all at the bottom. And then like the top is lighter. But it's so good, you guys, honestly. Two dollars. I barely ever go to McDonald's. Anyway, I got pancakes. Wow, you guys, I do not know what's going on here. Uh, I don't. Oh. That way, that way. Did you, did you videotape me ordering my meal? Yes. Did I say no mayonnaise and no sauce? Yeah. My Big Mac, I don't want any of that sauce on the map. No, no mayonnaise or sauce or whatever. <laughs> can you do a no video? No Big Mac sauce. Can you, can you do it? No, you're not getting this picture. No, due to the box. Oh. Do you see what that is? That's sauce. Hey, look at this. I don't think you're getting it. The, 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 no, I think they see it. It's totally full of sauce. I said no sauce. I don't want any of that sauce on the map. No, no mayonnaise or sauce or whatever. <laughs> oh my god, I need my four dollars back. <laughs> oh my god, I love Sundays. I love. I love Sundays. You didn't give napkins. I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can't believe that she. Oh, there's my bill. She. Oh, they put milk on it. Wait. Oh, didn't put mine. I can't believe where did it did I said where no did... mayonnaise. She put like three times the mayonnaise. <laughs> I've never seen a big man with so much sauce. <laughs> Whoa, I dropped the bill, I think. <laughs> they didn't even give butter. I should have asked. I guess I don't need it. See, that's God's way of telling me, Jada. You don't need the extra parts. Well, it's just God's way of saying I need the extra sauce. She <laughs> <laughs> said no sauce. <laughs> she said no sauce. That's so funny. I said no sauce. Look at it. It's full of sauce. Look at this. Oh my God. This is terrible. Anyway. I should really ask for a refund. Because we drove all the way to the park. Can you please videotape this so I can tell them that they need to get? Because we drove all the way to the park. <laughs> She's gonna show them this. Yeah, you know, we drove. I'm not. You know, we drove all the way to the park to watch the cars. I specifically said no sauce. It's full. Of sauce. Red heart. Red heart. Red heart. I mean, I Mom, could, I could understand that. You know, you don't eat it and then whatever. I get that. But we drove to a location for us to enjoy it together. You even scraped up all the sauce. What? You, I saw you eating it. Look at it. Let me yeah, see that. Like Let me that. see it. Let me see the condition. She scraped up the sauce, you guys, and still ate it. Like, scraped up. I didn't mean to. You didn't mean to scrape up the sauce? It was an accident. <laughs> Which one do you like better? Um, I like both. Yeah. Let's just share both of them then. Okay. Let's just go back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> I specifically ordered no mustard, no sauce, no mayonnaise, and I ate it, but it ruined my experience because we were at the park and the car show and I had to drive all the way back. We got to pay attention to what we we're ordering, right? Right. I'm sure if you even tell them that you ordered a Big Mac with no sauce. Well, I did, but I, you have it on video where I ordered it. Do you yeah, know I do have it? it. So if they don't remember, we'll play the video. This is the benefit of videotaping things. 
because I very emphatically was like, no mustard, I mean, no mayo, no sauce. I don't want any of that sauce on the mat. No, no mayonnaise or sauce or whatever. No mayonnaise, none of that stuff. So we're going back to the McDonald's, you guys. No, because they should know that they made a big error and I didn't, it wasn't, you know, like we were at the park, we were at the car show. <laughs> you see that. And the next time you read your Bible, you should call me over and I'll read mine. Okay. I have my book that we got from the religious library. Just go to the drive thru Yeah, yeah just go to the drive thru be like, I was here. Um, you gave me a Big Mac with no sauce. I specifically ordered it. They're not gonna ask for the other one back, you know? They're not gonna oh, no, ask. I mean, I said, I, I don't tell, it don't tell me what you did. Don't tell me what you did. Just say you guys gave me the Big Mac. Just tell him you gave me a Big Mac with sauce well, and I said no sauce. Luckily we recorded everywhere in my building. Luckily we recorded everything. Hello? Hi, what's the question? No, actually I ordered a Big Mac earlier with no sauce, no mayonnaise. And the Big Mac I got was smothered in mayonnaise. And I would like one without any mayonnaise or any of that sauce, please. Sure. Thank you. Oh God, this is gonna be so hilarious. That one? The next one? Yeah, ma'am. I I got I, I ordered I ordered the Big Mac with no mayonnaise, nothing, and I, it was smothered in mayonnaise. I have the video if you need to see it. Do you want to see it? You can pull to the next one. Okay. okay. <laughs> because you're like I have. I have the video. Oh, I right? <laughs> and I wouldn't care, but it was not enjoyable. Where? Where is They're the... not going to ask for the video, Mom. Trust me. Well, where, where did you airdrop it to? <laughs> what? Did you do I it have... to Facebook Messenger? I have the video. Where did you I have it, Mom. I have the video. Quick, it's your turn. Where is it? Where did you put it? <laughs> Dude, I might need it to show you. <laughs> it's in my camera roll. You said that you were gonna airdrop it. I know, but it's too long. It won't airdrop it. Bluetooth's not on, it'll take too long. So just be like, yeah, I got it. I got How about you do the talking for me? Yeah, see if all that learning. I can do it, but it's, you already started. No, you can do it. Just say my mom ordered. I'm exacerbated. I think they're just gonna actually, sir. Sir, earlier I came to the drive through <laughs> I ordered a Big Mac. Mm -hmm. I said no mayonnaise, no sauce, or anything. We took our stuff. We went to the car show, parked nicely to have a nice picnic, and it was smothered in mayonnaise. I've got the video. I've got the video where I ordered like no mayo. Uh, but in the Big Mac, there is no mayo. It's Mac sauce. I said no sauce. She, yeah, she meant I, no I, sauce, I, I, like I no, no any sauce. sauce. I've got the video. Okay, I thought like maybe to someone who took your order, maybe you said no mayo, so that's why I said no, no sauce, no okay. mayo, nothing. Okay, that's fine. And then we, we drove all the way okay, there. Okay, thanks. So Thank you. Sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry, it's maybe okay. I wasn't clear, but I clearly on the video said maybe no they sauce. Misunderstood your I'm sorry about that's that. Fine. So there was one big mac, right? Just so a big one. No sauce. That's no, all. no, none of the sauce, none of it whatsoever, please. So no sauce and what else? No just, sauce. Just, just no sauce. Yeah, yeah. Just made it on the corner. Sorry. What? <laughs> well, I thought it was pretty clear. I don't usually order Big Macs, to be honest. I order quarter pounder with cheese. But I said no sauce, no mayo, nothing, none of that stuff. Imagine, imagine we watched the video and it, you just said no mayo. Well, do you, okay, what do you think is in that sauce? If there's not mayo in that sauce, I guarantee you there's mayo in that sauce. But they mean sauce. like no mayo. No, but I mean, come on, like that sauce. Okay, but that that was like when I went to Burger King, they almost killed me. I said, I don't want any mustard, I have mustard allergy. Then they put the secret sauce. What do you think is in the secret sauce? Mustard. I mean, it doesn't mean that I don't want a pack of mustard. It means no mustard in it whatsoever. I guarantee you in that big bag. <laughs> 
these people sauce. here aren't trained like that. They don't even know what's in no, there. No, but what I'm trying to explain is I'm po this. guarantee you positively there's mayo in that sauce. I mean, it may not be just like white mayonnaise, but it's That's why mayonnaise. you got to tell them allergy. Because... <sighs> I mean, I, I, I really hate the taste of, like, sauces. Are you sure? Then why Even were you chicken scraping it up? Jada. <laughs> oh, my God. You were scraping the cookie. Jada, stop it. <laughs> As always order, I don't like that kind of stuff. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even have to do anything interesting for my vlog. I just have to spend the day with you. <laughs> And so these they, things randomly just happen that way. Anyway, where are you gonna do my makeup tutorial? Let's do it before and after. Oh, don't worry about that. Thank you. Thank you. No. <laughs> when are you gonna do my makeup tutorial? Yeah, let's do it all that. Today? No. Imagine it had sauce. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you it. Yeah, that's see how that's how it's supposed to look. See, perfect. <laughs> Hopefully they didn't spin in it. Well, I'm pretty sure I was pretty clear. <laughs> I, I said no sauce, nothing, no mayo. Like I, I was, I feel like I was very emphatic about it. <laughs> I mean, that's why I never order Big Macs. I just hate the, mm. I just hate the way they. I just don't like it. But it was what was. On I hate Big Macs. But I ordered that. I ordered it because it was on sale. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Pro probably I'll end up having some kind of allergy to this one. Really? One Imagine the, the next one that we could. Well, I said no sauce, nothing. Burger King, I mean, Burger Baron almost killed me years ago. <laughs> Watching an hour? Well, if you have to go into the hospital, <laughs> that's how we'll end the vlog. <laughs> she ate the sauce. No way. Anyway, do you want to go to the Wascana Lake one day and go kayaking or yeah. paddleboarding? Have you gone recently this year? Yeah, just last year. It's just June. It feels Start. really hot. It feels like, you know, they should open the pools earlier. It's really yeah. pretty. It's probably going to be really So what are you in now? Uh, my mom, she picks it up. Wait, what happened yeah, to my drink? Jada drank both. No, I didn't. You, you did drank so more. She's like, like, I'm not sharing with you anymore. Like, she drank more did than I, me. You, you drank I way not. more. Yes, you did. I saw you drink it. Both did of them. Did you have it on video? I don't yeah, I do. Okay, that, show me that one. I, I, I'll, You're I'll, the one who suggested sharing. Yeah, but that was when I thought it was going to be equal portion. <laughs> no, it wasn't equal. You no, had more. <laughs> if she doesn't produce the video, it's because she knows she drank more. <laughs> Way more. No, you drank more. No, I did not. Yes, you did. Look at that scary like thing that we were going to go to. Stonehall Castle. We have to support things in our city or else they're gonna, we're not going to have things in our city. You have to support local data. Yeah. Go to all That's why hands. I'm bringing the city up. You know? Oh, you mean you're going to record things? <laughs> right.